On today's show, I'm joined by Cavaliers forward George Nying. We talk about the upcoming season, playing for Kenny Atkinson, the new head coach of the Cavs, and the team having championship expectations. That's all straight ahead on today's Locked On Cavs. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Danny Cunningham. You might know me from my time covering the Cleveland Cavaliers, places like 92.3 The Fan, Cleveland Magazine, and a number of other stops along the way. I want to say thank you for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day. You can find the show anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit five stars on that rating, and make sure you leave us a nice review as well. You can also find us on YouTube. Just search Locked on Cavs on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. If you're liking this video, click subscribe and click the notification bell as well. Of course, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D O N NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Super excited to have George Niang on the show today. Talk to him about a number of things, playing for Kenny Atkinson, what's it like to play for a new coach, the Cavs having some championship expectations, and we talked a little bit about NBA media as well. George has his own podcast, The Bench Seat, the bench seat that you can go check out. I had him give me his top five NBA player podcast, so that is a part of the show you do not want to miss. But without me saying anything more, here's my interview with George and Yang. Joined now by Cavs for George Niang. George, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Really, really do appreciate this. Uh, media day less than two weeks away. Training camp in Florida less than two weeks away. So your summer has all but disappeared. How's that summer been? How have you been, man? Um, it's been great, honestly. Uh, obviously, we've had some changes uh, within the organization. Um, having a new coach and Kenny Atkinson that, you know, I, I think we're all excited about. Um to bring a new feel, a new touch, a uh, new energy uh, to this organization. And uh, I think a lot of us were disappointed how the year ended. Uh, you know, obviously you play to compete for championships and, and win championships. And when you come up short, you want to continue to be creative and find ways of how you can get better, how the team can get better. And I think, you know, having Kenny come in is is really going to help all of us uh, collectively get better. And also I think, individually i think the biggest thing that i've realized so far dealing with him is he's a worker uh he's in constant communication with all the guys with how can i focus on getting the best out of you with still getting the best out of the team and uh that's something that is extremely important especially with the mix of young um core guys we have but also seasoned veterans that we have Right. I want to get to the Kenny Atkinson stuff because obviously that's the biggest change within the organization from last year to now. There's really not roster turnover, but Atkinson being the head coach is a really big deal. So there are a couple of places I want to go with this. But one, I want to start here. You have played for a number of different head coaches in your time in the NBA, whether it's changing teams, other things. What's it like for you as a player adjusting to playing for a different head coach than you were the year before? Um, you know, obviously there's a little adjustments here and there, but um you know, I think overall the the job that Kenny's done with having great dialogue with each and every player, uh, and it's not just one. For the most part, you know, usually coaches come and talk to their star players, and that's kind of it. Uh, so Kenny's done a great job of having dialogue with everyone and what he expects out of everyone, what he expects when you come into the building, and uh, the goals that we set forward and have uh, for this year. Um, you know, obviously we're getting to – win a championship and progressing towards that every single day. And and that takes work. Um, you know, you wouldn't believe the hours that Kenny's already in there, you know, working before we get in there to, you know, start workouts and different things like that. So uh, it's been impressive, but uh, I think it's exciting because people feel the energy and the work, uh, you know, that he's going to put in um, to figure out ways to get creative, to get the best out of us individually, but more importantly, get the best out of us as a, as a team. I know you guys are, have had workouts this summer at various points. Training camp's not far away, we know. 
does it feel almost as if there's a little bit of a not a fresh start because the roster is the same but with a new head coach and a new coaching staff really in general there are a lot of other new faces on the bench that haven't been in Cleveland before but does it feel like it's almost a clean slate starting anew with a new guy leading the way as a coach no I mean I don't think anybody feels like it's a clean slate I, I think all of us know that we're here to win and we were brought here to help this organization win um I don't want to say it's pressure, but all of us, you know, uh, are demanding of ourselves and the people around us that we need to do continue to do the little things to help us win. And either you're doing things to help us win or you're doing things that are going to set us back. So uh, I think more or less, if you can choose to do things more of the time that are going to help us win, uh, the better off we'll be. I don't think anybody looks at this as a clean slate. Yes, we have a new coach, uh, but he's going to demand a lot out of us to make sure that we're the best. You know, this professional basketball um, is extremely competitive. I don't care where you are, but especially in the NBA for guys, you know, that are born in the States um, or even born overseas. This is, you know, probably the most competitive league um, in the world, right? You have 82 games and then you have playoffs to try and figure it out. Um, to win a championship and winning a championship is is not easy uh there's like there's guys that go careers without getting them and they've had highly decorated careers um so i don't think the clean slate thing is definitely what any of us are looking at i think it's more or less like now it's it's on us to continue to make things happen and continue to win so you've mentioned that C word a couple of times, championships. I, I think you've said it four or five times now. Um, yeah. That I think should be the goal for you guys with how much talent is on this roster, what you guys have coming back, the continuity as well. But as you do think about that and you look back at what happened last year, how important is the playoff experience last year, winning a series, which was the first time that group together won a playoff series, and then also getting an up close and personal view of the team that did go on to win the championship in the second round. That it was a five game series that I think was a little bit closer than a four to one loss, but how important is that experience as you go into this season? Yeah. I mean, sure. Uh, playoff experience is real, right? So to the fact that you got across, you know, you, know, you got to the point of where you, you won a, 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 a series in the playoffs, but like, this is Cleveland. Like, let's, let's be real that LeBron James played here, like <laughs> getting out of the first round, like you don't get a pat on the back and people aren't ecstatic about that. Like it's get to the finals and give yourself a chance to win a championship. I mean, that's what this city um, when it comes to basketball is accustomed to. And that's not going to change, you know, even if LeBron was here and, He's not now. I mean, the people here are, are expecting, you know, how are we going to continue to grow and get better to get to the finals and give ourselves a chance to win, you know, a championship? Yes, it was great that a lot of the young guys and us as a group got to win a playoff series uh, together, but we can't just sit here and talk about that and talk about, you know, playoff experience. Like, at some point, we got to continue to push and get to the point where, you know, we feel like we're maximizing – what we have in winning championships. So how do you compartmentalize that pressure? Because when you bring championship expectations, pressure is something that obviously does come with it. Um, I think that's something that's kind of followed you throughout your career, everywhere you've been. I think there for the most part have been championship expectations. Obviously yeah. you haven't gotten there yet, but what's playing under that pressure like? Um, you know, obviously each year you sit back and you think about, oh, well, how did we finish? Um, how could I have been better? And what do I need to change um, in my routine and what I do and how I attack, you know, the early weeks of the season, the midweeks of the of the season, you know, all-star break, before all-star break, after all-star break, and then the playoffs. And uh, you can't keep thinking you can do the same thing, especially if you haven't made it to the finals or, you know, won a championship. So uh, I'm constantly trying to find new ways to challenge myself um, and continue to grow and get better and bring people along with me, especially as a vet, because um, that, that's a thing that, you know, you'd never want that to be a lost art. You don't want your your veteran guys just thinking it's about them. You want them to bring guys along ag along with them, especially on these championship uh, journeys. Um, sure, it's, pr it's pressure, but at the same time, it's like this is a privilege to be able to have that pressure um 
to compete every night for a fan base that cares, right? You know, I, I would rather play for a fan base that, you know, cares and expects you to win than someone that's just happy with, you know, rolling out of the first round. Uh, I, that's not a fan base that's trying to get the most out of their team. And this Cleveland fan base expects the finals and championships. And I love that because when there's dark days and you need motivation, that's enough motivation right there to think about, you know, that carpenter, that electrician, that businessman that's taking his kid um, to a Cavs game, expecting you guys to win night in and night out. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the place that I go when I need tickets to an event, whether it's the Cleveland Guardians, the Cleveland Browns, a concert, anything else. Game Time is the ticketing app I use. Why do I use Game Time, you ask? Well, I use Game Time because they've got features that I absolutely cannot do without while I'm scouring the market for tickets. They've got the all in pricing feature. You just hit that little toggle, say, hey, I want to know what I'm going to be paying up front. I don't want to be surprised with last minute fees and taxes. Nobody wants that. You want to know what you're going to be paying before you hit checkout. Game time gives you the ability to do that. Another thing game time does that I absolutely love game time in the app. I click on a seat. Maybe I'm interested in sitting here, but they're going to show me exactly what it looks like in that seat, whether it's going to a Cavs game, because those are coming up. If you click a seat, you know, maybe you, maybe it's in the budget. You want to sit courtside and click it, you'll be able to see what your view of the action is going to look like. Maybe you want to go to Cleveland Guardians playoff games that are coming up because those are going to be here very, very soon. I'm excited. You should be too. Game time, the place to go for those tickets. It is absolutely something that knowing where you see, for me, that's a deal breaker when I'm shopping for tickets and game time has the ability to satisfy that need for me. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Pretty good time of year to be able to use $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms do apply, but create an account, redeem code locked on NBA for $20 off. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. So you mentioned the veteran leadership aspect of things, and obviously you've you've been in the league for quite a while at this point. What's your role like as a veteran? Not necessarily. We know what your role is on the court, but what's your role like in the locker room on the on the bench with the guys? What's that role like as a vet for you? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is you know, leading by example, showing up every day, doing the right thing, uh, being committed to the process of, you know, surrendering the outcome and showing up every day and focusing on, you know, getting better, right? Um, but at the same time, still having the seriousness of focusing on winning each day, whether that's practice or shoot around or a game, you know, we're focused on winning and moving forward and growing and, and getting better. Um, I would say holding people accountable, but we, this organization has done a good job of building culture around here where guys know what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis and what they need um, to continue to grow and be better. So it's not often that I would want to have you on to talk about a specific game, but I have a game that I need to ask you about because think back to last year, uh, Cavs played Milwaukee game in Cleveland. It was a Cavs win by 40. You went 13 of 14 from the floor, scored 33 points. It was one of the best performances just from an individual player that I've seen. What was that night like for you? Were you just, it, I don't think you missed a shot until the second half. I think you made your first nine. What do you remember about that night? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was remarkable. It was a career night for me, right? Um, you know, and I think when you're playing a East Coast or East Eastern Conference, um, you know, rival, you definitely want to bring your A game. I, I don't think Giannis played that game, but I just remember starting off, I think my first basket was like a fast break uh, floater. And then from there, you know, I happened to fall into a couple other buckets. And the next thing you know, it's like when you're six for six, you know, and you realize like, oh, just six for six, you know, and, you know, you, you almost are like, I can't miss, you know? So it's essentially – you're, I don't want to say you're unconscious, but you're just in like a free flow state. And, you know, Donovan was getting me the ball. Karras was getting me the ball. Sam, Max, um, all those guys. And it was, uh, 
it was a tremendous feeling. It was a great game. I think the coolest part was we got to really thump them and and beat them bad. And uh, you definitely want to do that and make a statement while you're you know going forward. Was that the first time you had experienced that? Like, I, I I don't know that you had another NBA night like that. I don't think you did. But at another level, did you have a, a day like that where you just you you were in that flow state and nothing? It didn't matter what was happening. Nothing could stop you. Yeah, I mean, they don't happen that often, but when they do happen, you definitely remember them. Uh, there was probably one other time when I was in Utah, I went seven for seven from three against Charlotte. And that was another time where it's like, wow, you know, uh, everything feels in rhythm. There's everything that's clicking. And it's just a good overall vibe uh, to have. Um, I think for me, it was awesome to have that in Cleveland. Um you know, especially, you know, making shots and beating a Eastern Conference rival. Because like I said, you know, Cavs fans expect a lot out of us. And that was a huge win to kind of propel us, you know, moving forward during the season. So I want to get to some of the stuff that you're doing off the court. I want to talk about um, maybe your next life in the media as well coming up in a little bit. But the one question that I do love to ask players that I have on the podcast or, or sitting down to chat with um, you for your entire life, I'm going to make the assumption that you have played basketball and dreamed of being in the NBA before you got to the NBA. Is that a fair thing to assume? Uh, uh, you know what? I will say yes, but it wasn't always like that. But yes, I, I dreamed about playing in the NBA for sure. So when did you know that you were good enough to be an NBA player? Like, was there a moment, was there a game you played, whether in AAU or at Iowa State? What was the moment that sticks in your mind where you looked in the mirror and said, I can play in the NBA? Uh, you know, I think it was probably my junior year going into my senior year where, you know, people were asking like, hey, are you going to, you know, come out or for the draft or whatever? And I was kind of like, well, why would you think that I'd be, you know, leaving school and, uh, then I went to LA and kind of was able to work out with some pros and kind of held my own, but more or less, you kind of realize that professional basketball is, um, uh, is completely different than, um, than college basketball. It was just nuances. I, I'm trying to explain it where it's like, would make sense, but it's almost to the point where it's, it's like speaking two totally different languages. Yes, there's some similar similarities, but it's like completely different. The physicality, the schemes, the continuity, you know, good shot, bad shot, shot clock, three-point line, like all that stuff. Um, but I would say probably my senior, going into my senior year through like the summer of my junior, at the end of my junior year was when I really realized like, oh, I could turn this into a reality. But that being that even said, I had a great senior year. I was the 50th pick and didn't play my rookie year and was cut sent down to the G League. So I would say it's more or less, you can always believe it, but it's a constant battle of proving it night in and night out. You don't have to prove it to yourself, but proving it to other people, you know, so that you can stick and have a, have a job. I think the best way to explain the difference between college basketball and the NBA is like they are, you know, you use the same basketball, you have similar rules, but despite all that, they are entirely different sports. Like it's just such a different animal one level to the next, not to say they're both not difficult, but they are different sports is the best way I would put it. Um, yeah. And then what was your welcome to the NBA moment? <laughs> um, you know, I think I've said this a couple of times on podcasts, but uh, I think it was Robin Lopez was playing in Chicago while I was in Indiana. And I like went up to go for a rebound in preseason. And as I'm going up for it, like he towers over me and like, grabs the ball out of my hand because I thought I was like high up grabbing it towers over me grabs it out of my hand knocks me over and as I'm down like fall like I fell over I'm looking back at the hoop under the stanchion and he's just dunking it and I was like oh <laughs> shit. like this is how this is like I never saw this type of stuff in college so yeah that was my welcome to the NBA moment that's that's absolutely amazing. And everyone that plays in the NBA has one of those moments. I love to love to hear about them. So you do some stuff away from basketball. You've got a podcast, The Bench Seat. Um, what made yes. you want to get into media? Um, you know, I think the coolest thing is I've always been into talking about sports. Um, you know, I've been into sports. Um, the media outlet has kind of been super cool because I've always liked to peel back the onion and see what it's like to be on the other side 
of the microphone. You know, you you play basketball, you do all these things, you have these expectations and thoughts about the media, and then until you have to get behind a microphone and you're asking the questions and you're like, holy smokes, you can't just show up and, and do this. It actually, you have to do some research. It takes practice. There's cues when to talk, when to let someone tell a story. And I'll never forget when I uh, went to the MBPA's broadcaster, you, Jerry Madelon, who's a, a great friend and mentor of mine in this, you know, media business. I was talking and uh, I asked someone a question and they essentially said something and I moved on to the next question and Jerry stopped me and was like, Hey, like, what if he just said, you know, I killed someone last Tuesday and you just skip over and just ask the questions that you have written out. Like you have to pay attention to what they're saying. Oh, so you killed someone last Tuesday. Like, tell me about that. So it's more or less you're trying to build a relationship with the person that you're having on your podcast or through media and essentially trying to draw them closer to you to pull out stories that, you know, podcasters or your, your audience would want to hear. And that's an art. And just like how basketball is an art with skill, like it's an art to, to storytelling, to getting people to tell stories, to getting people to have, to be relaxed enough to want to open up and tell you stories that, other people or your audience is drawn to. That's a, that is a great, that's a great example. That's an awesome story. And and one of the stories that you told recently on an episode of your podcast was with Mo Wagner. Obviously you just yeah. got done in April uh, facing off against him and Wagner, as you mentioned on the podcast. And I think anyone listening to this knows not exactly beloved in Cleveland. I'm not sure no, he's not, beloved not, in any of his not at arena. all. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and you guys talked about how you got really upset with him one time and you texted him that you wanted to fight him after the game. And obviously that fight did not happen in the hallway of whatever arena that game was being played. in. I'm not sure if it was in Orlando or in Philly um, when this story happened. But what's the closest you've come to actually being put in that situation? Uh, um, you know, I don't. I think there's a thing at the NBA where it's a lot of bark and not a lot of bite. Trust me, there are guys that are willing, you know, to get down like that. And I think anybody who's been completely disrespected would probably tango, as we would say, tang tango. Um, I haven't been too close. The Mo one was I wouldn't say it was close, but it, it could have gone either way. But uh, me and Mo have a, a good relationship outside of the basketball, uh, the game of basketball. Um, so just getting out there after I, uh, if you guys heard the story, I texted him like, meet me in the back hallway. I'm going to beat your ass. And uh, he met me back there and we were just laughing at each other. So, um, you know, games and tempers get heated. Um, but at the end of the day, like, there's no need to take it uh, to a whole new level when it's only um, basketball. You know, the playoffs is a different animal. Things get super intense. We're fighting for a championship. I totally get it. I try not to talk at all to my friends on the other team because it's like, this is business. This is what we're here for. Um, regular season, you know, I, I try to keep it cordial, but I'm still on the court. I'm trying to to kill you. Well, not kill you, but destroy you. That's so <laughs> aggressive. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. I've been telling you about FanDuel quite a bit. Why have I been telling you about FanDuel a lot? Well, because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So there are a lot of good things to tell you about, about how Emmanuel Classe is number two on FanDuel's odds for A.L. Cy Young or how the Cleveland Browns are favored this weekend as they play host to the New York football giants. I can tell you about all that, but what I do need to tell you about with FanDuel is the deal they've got going on right now. And you are running out of time for this, so you listen closely, but this is very important. Right now, through September 22nd, so like I said, you're running out of time. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You heard that correctly. 
You bet $5 with FanDuel, you get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you will be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need, a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. I've got Sunday Ticket at home. My Sundays are awesome because I've got Sunday Ticket. I want your Sundays to be awesome, at least until basketball season starts. Once that happens, you know, those Sundays, not spending as much time watching football, but until then, Sunday Ticket has me covered. I want them to have you covered too, at least for the next three weeks. FanDuel is taking care of that. So just visit FanDuel.com today to download America's number one sports book, and you can be enjoying your Sundays the same way that I am. All right, and I will get you out of here on this. Last thing I want to ask you, with you being, you know, in the podcasting game, there are a number of players in the NBA that are as well. I want to yes. know who your top five NBA podcasters are right now. Okay, so can they be X? X they can, NBA yeah. Players? If you want to throw like Jeff Teague in there, who I think is, does an amazing job telling stories, go for it, yeah. Yes, so, okay. So I'm going to go with from five down to one. Does that okay. work? Yeah, perfect, okay. let's do it. So I'm going to go coming in at five. I think Paul George's podcast, he does an amazing job. He does a great job of getting guests. He does a great job of having his uh, co-hosts that can kind of like drag in and draw in stories and kind of like talk the basketball lingo. And it's really entertaining. I think he does a really good job of, you know, finding like the newest hot guest, having it on the podcast and then kind of going from there. And it's, it's extremely entertaining because not only are you getting stories of like, the DeMar DeRozan's, the, the, is it Juju Watkins from, uh, from USC? Yeah. Like it's yeah. just all over, all over, um, all over the map. Like there's Cameron, uh, is it Cameron Brink? Is that, is that the one yeah, from, from the Sparks? Uh, yeah. Yes. To, to there. And he just has a wide variety of like strictly like basketball people on and it just gets really entertaining. Right. So I, I'm really drawn to that. Then at four, Ah, uh, this is tough. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Draymond Green because I find Draymond Green entertaining that he doesn't have guests on there and that he can just make it entertaining. Right. It's just like that's impressive because when you're sitting here, it's almost like, holy, shit, am I rambling? Is this too much talking? And he somehow finds a way to tell stories, to get his point across and go from there. So I, I find that really cool. The third one is one that I just, and like I find comical and laugh at is the Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett one. Like I think they talk about everything uh, under the sun, which I think is like extremely cool, especially for an outlet, um, you know, cause talking about basketball all the time gets kind of like tedious and repetitive. And Kevin Garnett's telling a story about, you know, the closer for the Mets and how he comes out. And Paul Pierce has no idea because, you know, who knows what Paul Pierce, he was like, Lord, you got to, you got to see how he gets down. Like da da da, da. And it's just like, <laughs> it, it's so, and he's like, he's, he's about to strike that MF or out. Like it's just entertaining. And I love to see that other side, especially being a kid from Boston, seeing them open up is uh super cool. Um, second, I got to go with my, my guy, Jeff T. He was my vet when I was younger. Um, and he does a tremendous job of people didn't really know the personality that he had before he was in the podcasting business, but the way he tells stories is exactly how I remember him when he tells stories about when we were around each other and the memory that he has is second to none. It's awesome. He has his co-host on there along with B and those guys are are funny too. They just the can you just imagine like them sitting around a fire telling stories? Well, now they just added a microphone to it and they have like rappers, Mike Epps, you know, basketball players on there. And I think that's super cool, especially as a retired player, to go out there and get that done. And then first, um, Steven Jackson and, and Matt Barnes, like all the smoke, you they've been doing it for so long now. And They've done a tremendous job of really – I want to say a couple of years ago it was towing the line of what was appropriate and not appropriate, but it was almost yeah, like – Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you going to punish us for the truth? And <laughs> they just tell the truth, and it's kind of been accepted. You don't get canceled. Um, it, it's definitely 
something that you know I've I've grown to to uh, appreciate and like. And I got to give an honorable mention shout out to the Pat Bev podcast because his is actually the same thing of toeing the line, especially last year getting traded in the midst of that year. You're posting episodes of what's actually going on, and I think that's super cool. So Pat Bev and uh, the Pat Bev podcast definitely get an honorable mention over there at Barstool. Well, we got to get your podcast in your own top five uh, very soon, George. There we go. The <laughs> Bench Sheet <laughs> Podcast. Like, subscribe, follow. We're on Instagram. You know, we're on YouTube. Go, get on our YouTube channel um, and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, George Yang, the host of the Bench Seat Podcast, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you get podcasts. Also plays basketball for the Cavs, I guess, too. George, thanks so much yeah, for doing right. this. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you again for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every day. Like I said earlier, you can find the show anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. Also, make sure you check us out on YouTube. If you're still watching this video on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification bell as well for me. Also, shout out to George and Yang for coming on the show. I thought he was awesome. I um, really loved his podcast power rankings, but it was really great to get into some Cavs stuff as the season does approach. George, however, not the only member of the Cavs coming on this podcast. You're going to want to make sure you're subscribed. You're going to want to make sure that's on wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. I've got one of the Cavs starters coming on the show in a very near future. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't miss that. Thank you again for making Lockdown Cavs your first listen every day.